Hello, welcome back to Final Fantasy VIII Remastered Commentary Playthrough. Uh, today will be uh, part three for the uh, walkthrough here. So, in the last part, we were uh, we had done the fire cavern and entered the to uh, town of Balam. And just got to see some more of the world and, you know, change the uh, the card rule to trade rule all from the card queen. Uh, so today I'm going to focus primarily on uh, showing where the rare cards are at in the beginning of the game. And if time permits, then uh, kind of get a start on the uh, main mission. So as we saw, there was a little boy running around here. Uh, he actually carries one of the rare cards in the game. And really, you can find him all around the garden, but I just usually wait right here. He'll, he'll come running around in the circle. And you can speed it up with times three option as well. And then once you get him, intercept him, come over here, hit the square and then has to play cards with the kid. And then you'll see that because of my, uh, my when I went to go talk to the card queen, I was able to get the trade roll to all. Sometimes that's not gonna pop up, it's gonna be um, one, and it might be a different roll. If you just quit out and then keep asking to play cards until you get the trade roll that you want, um, that's basically how you manipulate the, the trade roll in the game. So, we're gonna keep it at all, and then it should be it should be spread throughout this uh, the Balam region pretty much uh, for the rest of the uh, the game until we start hitting other cities, and then we're gonna you know start getting different rules, and everything's gonna get all janky. So you know for now, open and trade rule is like the best thing we can do right here. And then from here, you just kind of want to select your best cards that you possibly have in your deck at this point which probably isn't going to be too great. I generally try to go for cards that give me a strong defense in the corners, um, because the, the NPC seems to always play cards in the corners. They rarely ever play anything in the middle until you start doing stuff like that. And then right out the gate, he already played it. It's the uh, the Choco Mog card here. Or I should say the Mog card. So with Mog out on the playing field already, he's played exactly what I wanted. And now we got to just figure out how we can beat this guy. So the same thing applies here. You kind of just want to try to bait as as much as you can. Uh, you are going to probably have to sacrifice cards in order to make this happen. Uh, not the easiest of battles to do, uh, especially when you're trying to win rare, uh, rare cards here. Yeah, so it doesn't look like I'm going to take this one. Um, so in the instance of a draw, just keep hitting it again. And then we will just have to keep trying. So on this instance, he did not drop it, but he does have cards that are worth winning. So these are kind of like... Uh, level six level seven monsters and you really do want to win as many good cards as you can because it'll just improve your chances you know so all i'm going to do from here is just basically just keep playing this card game until i win that mod card uh if i do end up losing then i'm gonna you know have to save scum it so hopefully we don't have that happen
So, you know, he is kind of tough, you know, without any good cards in hand. But we won a lot of amazing cards off of him there, so... That is the uh, first rare card that we were after, is the mini mod. So pretty much any cards from page 8 to 10 are only going to have one, and they're all rare. Uh, usually going to be GF, boss cards, um, and I think, yeah, so GF and boss cards are pretty much what these are, and uh, uh, player cards. So we're going to go try to win the first player card that we can find right now. If you do play the um, the Doctor at cards, she also has some pretty good uh, cards in her deck as well. She actually carries like a lot of late game enemies that we can try around. Let's see if we come out on top. I mean, it's just so important to have that, that trade rule change to all so that you can just get every single card right out the gate. <clears throat> and if you're trying to, um, if you're trying to, like, cheese the game or whatever, then, I mean, the card ability is, is going to help you tremendously, uh, especially when you learn car, uh, card mod from the GF gets a bottle. So you can learn a lot of early, like, late game abilities pretty much right out the gate if you just know exactly what you're doing with it. I mean, there's, there's plenty of guides, though, to kind of help with that, so... I'm not going to be covering it, because, you know, I'm not going to do the, uh, the cheese route here. Alright, so where you want to go is you want to go to the cafeteria. And then back in the first part, I kind of explained a little bit of uh, an NPC in the back that is going to be kind of valuable to us. And this guy over here, if you just hit square on this group and you hit uh, talk to the guy in the back, uh, he is going to drop the Questus card. He's one of the Treppy group uh, fanatics. So we wanted to grab some rare cards to kind of help with this fight because he does have some pretty uh, good cards in his hand. So he didn't bring it out just yet, so we're going to have to kind of grind around for this one. And if you feel like you won, like, really good cards and you don't want to lose those, you can run back to the dormitory. Um, and, you know, save your game and all that kind of stuff so you don't lose out on those cards in case you do end up losing, you know, one of your rare cards or something like that. So in this instance, I got the trade rule one. I'm just going to quit out of that. And then just reopen it back up. And we're just going to keep doing that until we get the all roll back. And it could take a few attempts. Sometimes they, you know, the RNG here is terrible. So yeah, there you go. If you just keep spamming it over and over again, you'll end up getting the trade roll on the back. Uh, so anyway, I'm just going to try to win the Quest's card, and then I will rejoin after I do that.
So if you are looking to to uh, cheese the game, then uh, these Elnoil cards are kind of the uh, the key into how you do that. So you can obtain uh, Squall's ultimate weapon. You'll need to win at least ten of them, though, and they're kind of rare to drop. So if you just continuously play this guy and you win ten of them, I mean, you know, that's just it's gonna take time. So, but if you want to sit here and grind it, then you can definitely do that, and then it turns into a uh, certain item that you need for his uh, legendary weapon. So. Just keep that in mind. And I'll show another NPC that uh, plays these quite frequently, so you could speed up the time just a little bit. And then what I'm doing is just, every now and again, like, I'm gonna save, because, uh, you know, I did win a lot of cards there, so I just don't want to lose, you know, that much progress because of one bad mistake. But even though our, our hand is filling out pretty nicely now, so I shouldn't have too much of an issue winning uh, many of these hard battles now. As you see that the victories are getting a little bit easier because they're just running out of cards that are having a hard time keeping up with um, the numbers that I'm producing here. Then we're back to it.
And you do kind of want to like maximize your opportunity uh, whenever you do see the player cards drop because they are they don't play infrequently in their hand. Like you saw there, I think I did like what like seven eight rounds before I even pulled it again. So with quest is card one, uh, we are good to move on from this area. Now then, what you're one that what you're gonna want to do is um, head over he uh, to the town of Balam, and we can win a second player card over there. Uh, the guy at the gate, he he has some like good beginning entry monsters. Um, usually, if you want to like build up your deck, if you're having a hard time uh, with the basic deck and just the Ifrit card, then play him for a little bit, and you'll uh, actually end up getting some pretty decent hands. Uh, you know, to to begin with. And they're not the best monsters in the world, but they'll get you something. Just head over here, uh, get to the save point. Because this NPC can be kinda tough when it comes to the card battling. So you're gonna go into this second door right here. And you're gonna play this one. I guess we're going to have to wait to, uh, maybe I could have played it earlier, I don't really remember. You definitely can play that one in cards, but I think we have to progress the storyline uh, just a little bit here. So we will go ahead and do that. So we'll just take a look at his monsters that he owns. So you can already see he drops some pretty good cards right here. So he is going to try to... Sometimes they make just questionable moves, you know? I guess in terms of AI though, I mean, Queen's Blood from Rebirth is a bit more difficult in that regard because it seems like whenever the computer has an opportunity to beat you, they're gonna take it all the time, and you can kind of use that to manipulate that game, but uh, in this one, they just, they're kind of random and chaotic with their moveset, so there's no telling what they want to do. Um, the only time that you can really tell when the, when the computer's trying to cheat you out is when it's, uh, when the additional rules start popping up, uh, and those will be a lot harder to deal with once we start seeing them, you know? If you got things like the same and the plus rule, all of that stuff will be seen when, you know, when we get to it. But just come to your bed, get changed. Wear your little, uh, spiffy 
little tracksuit here. get my guy Zell. One of my favorite characters in the entire game. Pretty much throughout the entire franchise too. about his status screen uh, nothing really important going on with that just kind of shows you his uh, he's a so he's a fighter character he just punches punches and kicks you know for damage your basic monk from the uh, you know the franchise in total so you can just go into a status screen and then just kind of check out what his uh, combos are whenever you activate his limit break But they show up during the limit break too, so it's it's all kind of monotonous stuff here. So, in the very beginning of the intro, I kind of explained that some of the characters are going to be HD models, and then there's going to be some that look like that. <laughs> so that was the original PlayStation 1 versions of them. And, um, and a lot of people tag this as a lazy remaster. Um, I mean, for good reason. And you can still see that some of the characters kind of got left out. They didn't want to HD everybody. I'm sure that project would have taken forever. Uh, the only way to really fix this is... We're just going to have to wait for, you know, a remake to happen in the future, or I don't know, if you play PC, maybe there's a mod for it, I have no idea. But yeah, we're going to be seeing stuff like this throughout the game, so sorry if it's hard on the eyes, but you know, you got to mix the, uh, the new with the old, I guess. Quest is over here still just kind of teasing him. And <laughs> chicken wings. Cypher always just having to say something to the group. Mm -hmm. 
So vehicles in the game are widely useless. Um, there's only one good vehicle. But throughout the cities, you can uh, purchase vehicles to kind of drive around towns. Now, when you're inside a vehicle and you drive on the grasslands or inside of the uh, forest, you will not engage into uh, any kind of random battles, which is, you know, kind of dependent on what you want to do here. But with the, uh, you know, the HD remaster, you can just kind of hit the double analog sticks and you can just, you know, hit no encounters anyway. But for the most part, you can just drive all around. Uh, your vehicles will run out of gas uh, and fuel is something that you can purchase from the vendors around every city. I would suggest probably not getting to that point because fuel is uh, really only needed for one section of the game, but you can turn fuel into items as well with certain mod abilities. So for me, it's uh, not really needed to do something like that. So play with it how you wish, but I generally don't mess around. Uh, when you drive into a city, it'll park the car for you. Always find it funny. I think like you're you're trying to do like this super important mission, but you know you got other things to do in the town. You got to go buy stuff. You got to play some cards. You know. So I'm just gonna check real quick with the uh, the NPC earlier and see if she's still available to play. Okay. So we'll have to wait until after the uh, the mission here to go ahead and get that card. I believe you can get it earlier. I think I just didn't activate her early enough. But where we're going, there's going to be no sorts of card playing anyway, so... No need to do it here. So the cure draw point is going to disappear for that part, but then it'll always reappear afterwards because the uh, boat was over, or the boat was blocking it. So Zhu here is going to go ahead and explain the mission that we are about to embark on. So here you can talk to your, your partners. I would talk to uh, Cypher last because he's going to tell you to do something. So you want to talk to Quests first. Uh, depending on your on your situation here, um, if you didn't understand what the mission briefing was, you can ask Quests again, but it will affect your overall seed ranking. So if you have to be explained, if you disobey orders, if you take too long in doing stuff, if you run away from battles, all of this stuff is going to 
you know, kind of come back and haunt you when it comes down to your seed rank. But like I said before, in the Fire Cavern, you don't really have to worry too much about it because you're going to have an opportunity to raise your seed rank um, over time. So for this instance, do not... Is the mission simple, you know, we, we just, we're a mercenary force, we're trying to assist uh, the town of Dalit from being invaded, you know, and repel, repel the uh, G-Army attackers and stuff like that. So we're just going to say it's nothing to her. We'll talk to Zell. Some more banter between the two here. So you have to, the, you're, gonna, you're gonna get a score here. If you just say no, then you're gonna get docked some points. So just say okay to him. <laughs> you just gotta have to deal with him. So a pretty intense sequence here, you know, we're arriving, it's pretty much D-Day right now on this, on the beachhead. Uh, every time you see, like, something in yellow text, it's kind of like a reminder or a hint, you know, and you, you do really want to pay attention to those, those kind of things. Anything that's blue, red, yellow, just kind of pay attention to see, you know, what they're trying to tell you. Uh, usually it's in the form of a hint or something that can help you out in the future. So in this instance, Quest is just telling us don't forget to equip your PS because we got new party members. And when it comes to this kind of stuff, what you want to do is that you want to go down to the switch. And if you junction exchange, anything that the partners are, or, you know, that your team members are carrying can be junctioned and exchanged with each other. So everything that Quest is like has magics or GFs can transfer over to a, another character and you're going to be doing this a lot throughout the game. Um, so you know just kind of remember who you kind of give stuff to if you want to keep that pairing or you can just you know rejunction everybody. It's just depending on how you play. So in this instance um, I'm going to give all of quests and stuff to Zell. So then, when we go to the Junction menu, we're going to see that he now has Shiva equipped. And every little stat piece that we have filled with magic will also transfer over, because this is, you know, all part of the Junction exchange. So it's a really useful tool so you're not having to micromanage every 10 seconds or anything like that. I usually keep uh, Cypher without... Or, you know, I keep him without any GFs because he's just not going to stay in the party long enough for me to care about him. And his attack is pretty strong as it is because he has the same ability as Squall where you hit the R1 and, you know, his gun blade also shoots off from some little flame. But do make sure that you at least have all the GFs equipped to, you know, your characters in party right now so that they can learn some abilities get some AP for these early battles.
All right, so I'd say in the uh, in the next part, I'm going to go ahead and do the entire Dalit mission. Uh, we'll end it here, and then, you know, we'll continue on with the storyline. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next part.